Hello everyone, this is Kat. Welcome back to My Hero Academia Podfix. This will be the continuation of Little Izuku and the League of Villains. This is part two. Hope you guys enjoy. Izuku woke up on the couch where he'd laid down after several exciting experiments and dinner. Although he didn't have a blanket or a pillow then, he realized someone must have given him some. The thought made his insides warm. He yawned and sat up, rubbing his eyes, bleary with sleep. Sounds filter through his ears, though he was only partially listening, and from what he could hear it must be the news. If anyone has seen the student, please contact UA High School or your nearest police station. I repeat, if you've seen him, please contact UA High School or your nearest police station. Izuku looked over the back of the couch to briefly see a woman with a microphone on the TV above the bar before the screen was switched away to someone else. Dang it, he didn't get to see who was missing. Mura. Izuku yawned. The man that was sitting at the bar turned. The TV switched off quickly. Hey, Izuku. How long have you been awake? Izuku stood up and he walked over to the bar. Not long. He dragged a stool next to Tomura and climbed up, leaning on the man's side. Were you watching the TV? I had the news on. He heard Tomura rasp, though Izuku had shut his eyes. No, though I heard a reporter say to contact Iwe. Is everything okay? He leaned away from Tomura to stretch, back popping nicely as he did. A student is missing, that's all. Izuku frowned. Will the heroes find them? He asked, and Tomura seemed amused. And he ruffled Izuku's messy curls with three fingers. Maybe, though maybe not. Heroes make mistakes sometimes. Izuku nodded in acceptance. I hope whoever it is, they're doing okay, Izuku said earnestly. Maybe they're just lost. Maybe that's it. Izuku smiled at Tomura, but turned away as he heard footsteps coming down the hall. Oh, kid's up. Dobby appeared, and Izuku waved. Hiya, Izuku said, and Dobby waved tiredly, yawning. Izuku. Izuku turned to see Tomura looking at him seriously. Tonight, everyone will be going on a mission, and you can't go with them. They won't come back until tomorrow night. Izuku frowned. Why not? I want to help. Tomura grinned, but he shook his head. It's great that you want to help, but they have a job to do. It could be dangerous for you. Izuku sighed, pouting. Fine, but I'm not happy. Oh, baby's not happy, Shigaraki. Toga skipped into the room. He can't go with you on the mission. It would be too risky. Tomura glared. But what if he went with me in twice? Dobby eyed Tomura thoughtfully. We're not supposed to be seen at all, staying back in the fight. It'd be safe he'd get to see us working. Tomura narrowed his eyes, and Izuku looked back and forth between the two excited. Fine, but if they see him... Dobby grinned. Then we'll just have to be extra careful, won't we? Dobby raised an eyebrow, and Izuku ran over to hug his legs. Yes! Thank you, Dobby! Izuku squealed. Yeah, just don't run off, Squirt. Izuku nodded rapidly. I'll stay put. Promise. Dobby just patted him on the head. Oi, don't let him anywhere near muscular or moonfish. Izuku turned to see Tomura looking very serious. Eyes were red and gleaming. Duh, Dobby rolled his eyes, and he bent down to scoop Izuku up. The mustard kid doesn't seem so bad, though. Whatever, just don't let Izuku out of your sight. Tomura glared, and Izuku patted Dobby's cheek, looking at Tomura. Don't worry, Mura, I'll stay put, Izuku assured him. What's the mission? Dobby took a seat on the stool, holding Izuku still, and he set him in his lap. We're doing a version of that forest mission you explained yesterday, Tomura grinned. There's someone that we need, that we wanted, but now we want even more. Izuku tilted his head. So you're going to a place in a forest to take someone and get out? Izuku nodded thoughtfully. What about the quick getaway? Koragiri's quirk is called Warp Gate. It's like teleportation. Whoa, Izuku's eyes sparkled. That's perfect. Will you be extracting the person all stealthy-like? Sort of. We want to make a little bit of a splash. Any ideas? Izuku tilted his head at Tomura's words, shifting a little to lean more into Dobby. Well, you could have two teams, like a distraction team and an extraction team. But for that to work, the target would have to be separated or something from the main group already. Izuku frowned and thought. If all the threats were in one place, the distraction team would have to be there. That way, they'd think anyone from the distraction group would be safer. They'd want the target as far away from the perceived threat as possible. The distraction team would have to be people who could easily 
put on a show. Flashier quirks to catch the attention of people to keep the others hidden. They'd need to hold the attention and keep any threats contained. The extraction team would need to be stealthier, quirks that could be used in the down low and smaller areas. Spreading all of our allies would be a good idea. Izuku paused and then smiled at Tomura, apologetically. Sorry, Mura, that's all I got. Izuku looked around and froze, seeing everyone suddenly in the room and staring at him. He hadn't even noticed them arriving. Oh, hiya, he waved. Kid, that's perfect, Dobby said from behind Izuku. Izuku tilted his head all the way back up to look at Dobby. Really? Let's change the plan. No, the old plan was better. Izuku blinked and looked at twice. Compress was looking thoughtful next to him. I could be on the distraction team, of course. I can hold an audience's attention. Izuku grinned at Compress's flamboyant declaration. Muscular and moonfish would definitely be distracting, Dobby mused. They can't be subtle for the life of them. Mustard would be good for the stealth team. He could be useful if we encountered people who aren't the target, Magne added. In the original plan, he was going to use it as a wider scale, but it would attract a lot of attention. Dobby could be on the stealth team, too. Without using his quirk, torching the whole place would be obvious as hell, Tomura added. Twice would be pretty good for my team, and Toga, too. She could get more people's blood if Mustard is taking them out, Dobby put in, and Izuku looked from adult to adult with wide eyes. Who are you all going up against? Izuku blurted. It's heroes, right? Everyone froze, and Izuku blinked huge eyes at them. Will, will they hurt you? Yes, they will, Tomura murmured. They said we're villains, and heroes take down villains by any means necessary. Izuku frowned. They have a base in the middle of the woods? Who all will be there? Tomura sighed. We're attacking a training camp of UA first years. They'll be the Pussycats, their teachers, Eraserhead, and Vlad King. Izuku perked up. I know them, Izuku grinned. Eraserhead avoids the media because he says it gets in the way of his job. He's got an eraser quirk centered around the line of sight. He uses a capture scarf and yellow goggles during heroics. He's an ambush-style underground hero. Tomura nodded for him to continue. Vlad King has a blood manipulation quirk. It only works on his own blood after it leaves his body, and he isn't affected by blood loss, which is super cool and is definitely an advantage if he's really injured. But he's also really strong. That's not part of his quirk. He's just super buff. Izuku grinned. The Wild Wild Pussycats, they're rescue heroes, and they work in perfect sync from years of teamwork. Mandalay is the leader. She's got a telepathic quirk that allows her to spread messages to people telepathically. Super cool. But also bad if she can tell people that you guys are attacking. Pixie Bob has an earth manipulation quirk, where she can move the mountain debris, and she can make monsters to fight people, and even cause avalanches. Ragdoll has the quirk search, which allows her to see and find up to 100 people in a huge area, and even their weaknesses. Every person she catalogs stays in her memory. Tiger's the last one, and he has a stretchy quirk. I think it's called Playa Body. He's super flexible, can bend or flatten or stretch himself in a super cool way, and it can be kind of creepy too. But he's also super buff, like Vlad King. Izuka looked at all the attentive people that were watching him, his friends listening as if what he said mattered, and he wilted a little. Because they're going to try and hurt you, and you'll hurt them back, won't you? Yes, we will. Tomura confirmed. But we don't need to kill them. We have two targets, and if we get them after showing off a little, then we'll just leave. Izuku nodded slowly. Who are you after? Izuku tilted his head. Well, Ragdoll for one. She's got a powerful quirk. Izuku didn't know why that mattered, but he nodded in acceptance. The other is a student. We wanted him originally for recruitment, but he's hurt someone that we've come to like a little bit. So you're hurting him back? A little bit, Izuku asked, confused. Mostly we want to see how society will react to a child of a main institution like UA being taken, a test of sorts, Compress said, smiling at Izuku. We're not petty criminals. We're working together to achieve a larger goal, Izuku nodded. Okay, so can I go then? Izuku asked, scrunching his nose up in thought. I could go with the stealth group, because then I won't be seen, but I also could go with the distraction team. I obviously couldn't really help, but it would definitely be distracting if Hiro saw a kid with what they thought were villains. You'd definitely be a distraction, all right, Tomura muttered, making Izuku tilt his head. He snuggled closer to Dobby with a smile. But we'll be lying to them a little, Izuku added, grinning. They don't know that you wouldn't hurt me. But you do? 
Toga asked, a feline grin on her face. You know that. Of course, Izuku nodded. Dobby said so. He said he wouldn't hurt me. Izuku smiled as warm and scarred arms wrapped around his shoulders. See, do I look set on fire to you? Everyone laughed, and Izuku beamed at them. Why would anyone think these people could be villains? Izuku was happy eating lunch when he noticed that Toga was drinking something red and sloshy from a bag. What's that? he asked, tilting his head, and Tomura and Dobby both looked up, and Toga grinned at him. Her fangs were dripping with red. It's blood. Do you want some? She bounded over and held out the bag, but Izuku shook his head. No, I have a sandwich, he said, beaming at her. Toga, do you drink blood because of your quirk? Yeah, my quirk is called transform. It means that I can change into anyone I want if I drink their blood. Izuku's eyes went round. That's so cool, he exclaimed, grinning at her. Can you drink three different people at the same time? And then can you switch between them? Is there a time limit? Can you use the quirks of people that you look like? Can you change size and become smaller or taller based on who you're pretending to be? Kid, you're a walking ray of sunshine, Dobby said, making Izuku turn to him. Why? Izuku asked, tilting his head, and Dobby huffed. You're chill with literally everything. My quirk does have a time limit. Izuku turned back to Toga, who was sipping her blood again. Depending on how much I drink, the longer or shorter amount of time that I can stay transformed. That's so cool, Izuku repeated, smiling as he nommed on his sandwich. He frowned as he chewed the bite and then looked up at Toga after he swallowed. People with blood quirks have a higher statistical chance of being treated badly because of quirk discrimination. Toga's grin faded a little. My parents didn't like my quirk. They wanted me to be normal, she said, her smile smaller but not gone. Blood is so pretty, and I wanted to become the person I loved, but they didn't like that. But it's okay. Shigaraki here let me join, and now I can have all the blood I want. She was grinning again, and Izuku just laughed. Mura saved me, too, Izuku told her, making her giggle. Of course he did. That's what he does. Toga laughed, despite the glare that she received, and Izuku smiled for the rest of lunch. For the next few hours, the League went over plans and strategies and placements to implement what Izuku had suggested into their original plans. Izuku didn't follow most of it, but he did make some suggestions. For example, taking out Mandalay first instead of Pixie Bob, it would make it so that they couldn't call for backup with her quirk, and the suggestion earned Izuku some head pats. After dinner, the League was bustling around to get ready, and Compress was discussing with Kurigiri something about a harness. Izuku just sat on the bar happily swinging his legs, and he watched the chaos with Tomura sitting to his left. Why do they have to leave first? Izuku asked, frowning. Because they need to find the two targets, remember? Tomura answered. You can join them tomorrow night. I'll give them a chance to let the other three know that you're going with them. Still sucks, Izuku huffed. Compress and Twice are staying behind, right? Yes, we are. Stupid plan, making us wait. Twice exclaimed from the side, and he made Izuku laugh. Well, I'm glad I get to go at all, Izuku decided, even if I don't like waiting. Oh, Izuku. Tomura grabbed his attention. Remember how I said you'd be a good distraction? Izuku nodded. It's because technically you're missing. Izuku frowned a little, and he tilted his head to the side. I know, Izuku told him. I have a mom, I think. She probably reported me missing. Tomura blinked in surprise. You're not mad that we're keeping you. You don't want to leave? Izuku shrugged. I... I don't remember her. If I go back, she'll just be sad, and I'll be sad. If I stay, at least one of us can be happy. Izuku beamed at Tomura. You guys are my friends, and I don't want to leave. Geez, squirt. Dobby ruffled Izuku's hair from the other side, making me grow a heart. Izuku giggled. You already had one, Izuku grinned. Remember, you said you weren't going to hurt me. That means that you're good. Whatever you say, Dobby rolled his eyes. Izuku, remember how I said you guys need to distract? Tomura caught his attention and Izuku nodded. We might say things that don't make sense, okay? Just to make the heroes mad, is that all right? Yep, Izuku grinned, looking at Tomura. You are my friends, and I know that. So what's Izuku's role? Spinner said, frowning. Is he just going to sit there and not say anything? He could pretend to be a hostage, Dobby shrugged. Scream and all that. Maybe we could do the opposite, Magni suggested. He's a hostage, but he doesn't even know it. 
Everyone looked confused, but Izuku lit up. Oh, I get it, Izuku exclaimed brightly. You mean like I pretend to be innocent and not know that you guys are the bad guys? You think we're the bad guys? Dobby asked, raising an amused eyebrow. Well, you sort of are, Izuku giggled. The heroes definitely think so. So he's just going to giggle and act like a little kid? Spinner checked. Oh, ooh, I'll tell them about how all you guys are my friends, Izuku beamed. They'll be mad about that, right? Because they think that you're bad, so they'll think that you've brainwashed me or tricked me. Dobby just laughed and reached over to pat Izuku's curls again. Sure, that works, he huffed. Kurigiri, the warehouse first, right? Yes, Dobby. Kurigiri's deep voice confirmed. Mustard, moonfish, and muscular are all there waiting. Yay, let's go, Toga grinned, spinning a knife. Izuku watched from the bar as the back wall was engulfed in a purple mist, and then each person walked through and disappeared. Whoa, Izuku turned to look at Kurigiri. Is your teleportation coordinate-based? How many portals can you open? Does it matter at all? Can people just die inside if you never let them out and leave them stuck somewhere in between? My quirk is coordinate-based, but I can't tell you much else, Kurigiri said. I've never tested it beyond its basic abilities. Izuku slumped a little, but he nodded. Izuku, I have a notebook for you. Izuku whipped around and gasped as Tomura handed him a notebook, and Izuku took it carefully and hugged it to his chest immediately. Thank you, Mura. I love it, Izuku squealed. It's mine. I can keep it. Yes, you can keep it, Tomura said, grinning. Here's a pen. Now you can plan whatever world domination you want. Izuku just laughed brightly as he accepted the pen and immediately started scribbling away. The next day, Izuku was just as happily scribbling away in his notebook, asking Tomura what the names of everyone's quirks were, including ones that Izuku hadn't gotten to meet, like muscular, moonfish, and mustard. There were a lot of M's. The notebook was quickly filling, and Tomura promised to get him another when he finished the first one. It made Izuku feel warm inside, and he'd given Tomura as big a hug as he could to thank him. As dinner had wrapped up, Izuku was once again sitting on the bar and waiting for everything to be ready. Izuku, Kumpers called as he approached, holding something odd with straps and something that looked like a seat. This will be able to make it so that you're strapped to me, and you'll need to stay there while we're there, okay? I can do that, Izuku nodded, grinning. The next few minutes were spent with the four adults, if you even counted twice, collectively trying to figure out the harness while Izuku just watched on with curious amusement. It ended up with Izuku sitting in a sort of kid-holder backpack type situation. He could see over Compress's shoulder, but his torso and his butt were attached to a harness that Compress wore. The straps went around the man's waist and over his shoulders. I'm a backpack, Izuku declared once he was all strapped in. Yes, you are, little one, Compress laughed. Are you ready, Twice? Let's go already. No, we can't, Twice announced, making Izuku laugh. I'll be sending the Nomu, Tomura told Compress, almost as an afterthought. We'll release it on the opposite side of the forest from the stealth team, just to keep any students nearby focused on that Nomu. As long as it doesn't disturb the plan, Compress said, nodding politely. Here are your communication devices. Don't lose them. Tomura said, sending the adults warning looks. He even gave one to Izuku, which made the child beam with delight. Are you ready, little one? Kompras asked as he settled his mask back into place, having removed it to put on the earpiece. Ready, Izuku confirmed, while putting his hand on Kompras' shoulders. Without delay, they stepped into a swirling purple portal, and Izuku gasped as they ended up in a dark forest. Izuku couldn't see anyone. Where are we? he whispered. There should be a clearing just ahead, and we'll jump in after Magne takes out Mandalay, Compress whispered back. Izuku nodded and said nothing, knowing quiet was best. Izuku waited, quietly, occasionally fidgeting, but he grinned when he finally saw the telltale pink light of Magne's quirk. What? A feminine voice cried. Mandalay! Another voice cried out, and Compress sprinted forward to enter into the clearing. Izuku immediately caught sight of Magne, pinning the telepathy hero with her magnet stick, as Compress jumped out dramatically to stand by her side. Ah, oh, are these kitties not up to the task? Compress teased, and Izuku giggled. Why? I, th I thought they made doubly sure, someone said shakily, a small boy with purple balls on his head. Why are there villains here? That looks like Midoriya, 
someone shouted. Izuku glanced at the speaker, a boy in a blue shirt glaring behind glasses. Izuku waved. Hello, he beamed. Mandalay is unconscious, Magne said smugly. First objective completed. How is everyone this evening? UA High School, pro heroes, Compress asked, a hand waving extravagantly. He'd probably have bowed, but Izuku would have been tilted funny, so he didn't. We are the vanguard action squad of the League of Villains. There was Tomura's splash, a name drop. The League of Villains? They have Midoriya? A boy with a tail had exclaimed. Ah, we've reverted him to the age of seven, Compress lied, hands switching. Such a cute little thing, isn't he? Not so dangerous now. Izuku giggled, clinging to the villain's shoulder. Can you believe how many friends I have? Izuku beamed at them. He tapped his chin, eyes wide, playing his distraction. Will you guys be my friends, too? Midoriya, you have to get away from them, the glasses boy yelled, taking a single step forward. Release our leader. Release that child as well. A blonde hero, Pixie Bob, had demanded. She sprinted toward Compress and summoned a massive dirt monster as she went, but Compress jumped forward and tapped her. The dirt structure that she'd controlled dissolved, falling back to the ground limply, and Compress held up a blue marble that had once been Pixie Bob and jumped back toward Magne. Pixie Bob! Izuku exclaimed happily as Compress handed him a little marble to hold on to. Unfortunately for the heroes, it wasn't the Pixie Bob marble, it was a distraction marble. Quirk Earth Manipulation. She can create anything out of the earth. Monsters, avalanches, pillars to escape. Such a cool quirk. Compress just laughed. You see, this little one is the reason we were able to be here. No memories of anything above the age of seven. So innocent. Izuku smiled innocently to sell it, as if he had no idea what that meant or what Compress was lying about. The glasses boy looked devastated, the tail boy looked shocked, and the small one just fell backwards onto his butt. These were hero students. Like we'd let you use him, Tiger growled. He'll be coming with us. I don't think so, Magne grinned. Back up. Out of the forest behind them, moonfish muscular, they both appeared. Izuku only recognized them from Compress and Tomura's descriptions, and he immediately decided he didn't like them. Mission. Such pretty flesh. Don't tempt me. I have a job to do. Moonfish had begged, and he whined in his deep and ominous voice, mouth gaping open. Izuka didn't like the sound of that. Come on, let me at him already. Muscular cracked his knuckles. I want someone to pulverize. Izuka frowned at him as well. Kids, get to the camp. Inform Eraserhead of the situation. Izuka lit up immediately at Tiger's words. Oh, Eraserhead's an underground hero with the ability to erase quirks in his line of sight. He hates the media and avoids it religiously. He's best in ambushes and he doesn't like drawn out fights where he can't look at everyone at once. Izuku listed off loudly for all to hear. Very good, Izuku, Compress praised. Izuku then tapped Compress on the shoulder. Yes? We should send Muscular to fight Eraserhead. From what I have in my notebook, he most likely can't win against Eraserhead. I don't like Muscular. Can we make him go away? Izuku whispered in his ear, and Compress laughed aloud. I like it, Izuku. Order away. And Izuku beamed. Muscular! Go attack Eraserhead! Izuku pointed in the direction the frozen students had started towards. Avoid the students. The pro is the goal. No, Glasses Boy had yelled. Muscular just grinned, though. Yes, finally, a target of my own. He then bent his knees and he launched forward. He was gone before any of the students had moved. Tiger, let us... The tail boy started. No, run for camp and trust a racer head will win. You know who's with him. Tiger threw a hand out protectively. I know who's with him. Vlad King's here, too, Izuku laughed. Quirk's the ability to control his own blood. Did you know that he can't bleed out? He's so cool, and he's really super strong, too. Oh, he can even harden his own blood to trap people. Midoriya, stop, the glasses boy had ordered. Don't talk about heroes. And Izuku frowned. Why? My friend said I could talk all I wanted. Don't you like me? Izuku sniffled dramatically, wiping his eyes as if there were real tears. People tell me to shut up all the time, but my friends don't. That's right, Izuku, Magne said, grinning at the horrified hero student. See, just like I said, those bad people don't appreciate you. Izuku almost laughed, not expecting her to play along. Midoriya, I didn't mean it like that, the boy in glasses had shouted. Go, I'll save Midoriya, and my two comrades. Go, just don't worry. Tiger interrupted, teeth bared toward the three villains and Izuku. Moonfish, 
Izuku turned to the one that Tomura said was slightly insane and definitely a cannibal. That hero's flash is very bendy. The villain groaned in an odd way that Izuku didn't like. Why don't you start with him? Moonfish ejected his teeth, throwing them forward with force only to be smashed away by Tiger's blows. That seemed to kick the hero students into gear, and they charged away from the battle and into the forest. Izuku beamed. Good. They'd all be safe, then. Well, all except for the one that Tomura wanted. Should we disengage? Has it been long enough? Magne had asked, looking over her shoulder. Also, take the hero, please. Compress, if she wakes up, she can contact everyone and ruin the plan. Compress reached out a hand and marbled the unconscious woman, switching them in his sleeve and handing a random other one to Izuku. Your quirk is so cool, Compress, Izuku beamed. Pretty, too. The man just laughed. I'm glad you think so, little one. Izuku played with his marbles, but he looked away from the two marbles he had now, and just in time to see Tiger actually smash a fist against Moonfish's head. Moonfish slammed into the ground, almost definitely knocked out. Izuku couldn't help but smile a little. What a shame. Extraction team is done. We have the targets. Head to the retrieval point in the next five minutes. Dobby's voice came over Izuku's earpiece. Well, well, looks like we'd better retreat. Compress sighed, dramatically, making sure Tiger could hear them. Moonfish is done for, Magne grinned, nodding. Back home we go, Izuku yelled, one hand pointing at the sky. Don't think I'll let you escape, Tiger started charging them, and Izuku gave a fake gasp. I'm sorry, you can have my marbles. Izuku threw them as far as he could, both of them, and he let them bounce and roll away in the opposite direction. Tiger bounded for them, scooping them up and glared as they all started to retreat into the dark forest. Compress immediately hopped into a tree, jumping delicately from one branch to the next, Izuku laughing happily all the while. Faster! Faster! Izuku cried out in joy. Compress chuckled, and they had to immediately dodge a massive ice wall that was covering their escape. Izuku gasped at the sheer power behind it, but then he shrieked in surprise. Midoriya! Izuku looked down as Compress landed in a nearby tree, and he saw someone who looked like they had candy canes on their head. Hello. Sorry, me and my friends want to go home. Can you move your glacier? Izuku called down to him. He was standing with a brown-haired girl and a green-haired girl. Probably a girl. The person was a frog. It's my friends and I, Izuku. Is all Compress did by chiding him, and Izuku just nodded. Sorry, my friends and I want to leave, Izuku corrected himself. They're villains! They stole you! They're not your friends! The brown-haired one had yelled, and Izuku frowned. They are my friends. They saved me, Izuku denied. Then he wiped his eyes, and he sniffed dramatically again. But the boy with the glasses told me to shut up. He was mean, and I won't be friends with him. You mean Ida? the brown-haired girl exclaimed. He's one of your best friends. Mura's my best friend, and Dobby, Izuku yelled. Let's go, Compress. Onward. Compress launched off the branch and headed up and over the ice. Izuku probably knew these UA hero students. They all knew his name, and the girl said he was friends with them. He'd asked Tomra. Nothing they said made any sense. The hero course students are not as big of a deal as I thought they'd be, Kumper said nonchalantly, and Izuku giggled. There's the meet-up point, Izuku pointed to the small clearing. Kumper headed straight for it, and landed lightly next to Dabi, Spinner, Toga, and Twice, and the person Izuku assumed was Mustard. Compress unclipped the harness and slid Izuku down his back and set him down on his own two feet, and then he marbled the harness. Izuku happily walked over to Dobby, who picked him up protectively. Muscular and Moonfish are taken care of. I didn't like them, Izuku said brightly. Magne is right behind us, so don't worry. Dobby just laughed. Everything go according to plan, then, Dobby smirked. Muscular and Moonfish's captures were not a part of the plan, Mustard said a little coldly. Yeah, but it was probably part of Izuku's plan. Izuku giggled at Dobby's words. Guys, we have a situation. Magne burst into the clearing, Dobby's grip tightening on Izuku as three hero students had burst out behind her, and Izuku gasped. It was the three from before, Glacier Boy, Frog, and the brown-haired girl, and they all stopped to stare at the villain group as Magne had joined them. Oh, hi there. Izuku waved a little, and then he secured his hold on Dobby, arms wrapped around his shoulders tightly. Hey, 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 I know these kids, Twice exclaimed. Who are they? The red and white boy. He looked furious, and he took a single step forward before Dobby spoke. Uh, 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 
He adjusted Izuku in his hold. Close your eyes, Izuku. Okay, Dobby. Izuku hit his face in the man's shoulder obediently. Whatever the reason was, Izuku trusted him. Careful, Todoroki Shoto. Dobby's voice said silkily. Izuku felt one of Dobby's hands release him, and he heard the telltale sound of him lighting a dark flame. One wrong move and the little one gets torched. Give him back, a croaking voice had yelled. Deku's our friend, another girl had yelled out. I don't care about whatever it is you did to make him like that, or how you're using him. He's a hero, and he always will be. Izuku cringed into Dobby, tightening his hold on the man's shoulders. Shh, Dobby had patted his hair. Izuku, what's wrong? Izuku lifted his eyes, and he saw Dobby really was asking. They called me Deku. I'm not a Deku. I'm not useless. Izuku whispered, and Dobby's eyes hardened, and he gritted his teeth. I know, kid. We'll be home soon. Izuku nodded and dutifully had hit his face again. Ah, you upset the baby. Izuku distinctly heard one of Toga's knives coming out of her sheaths. I already have two samples, but a third would be a lovely addition. Izuku inhaled sharply at the noise that he heard next, remembering the huge glacier. He looked up, eyes wide to see twice had advanced, and then immediately had to dodge backwards, away from the spreading ice, with his tape measure in hand. That's hot! Twice exclaimed, and Toga had charged the others that weren't the ice boy, brandishing a single knife as the little metal tubes had flew at the brown-haired girl's face. I'm Toga, Ochako. She landed on Ochako and pinned her. She then threw her knife and fl it flew at the frogged one, stabbing the knot of her hair and pinning the hero student to a tree. Toga's metal tubes then inserted themselves into the brown-haired girl's thigh. It has been five minutes since the signal. Izuku's head whipped around as he heard Kurigiri's voice, the students all freezing. Let us go, Dobby. Giri! Izuku exclaimed happily. Bye-bye, Ochako. We'll see each other again soon, Toga said as she stepped through the portal that had spawned next to her. Mustard went through with Magne and twice had jumped through another. Time to go, Squirt, Dobby said in his ear, and Izuku nodded. Compress and Dobby walked backward toward the gate, eyeing the students who had started to charge. Suddenly Izuku cried out as a beam of blue sparkles had smacked into Dobby's arm, and Izuku went tumbling to the ground. Izuku! Dobby's shout rang as Izuku rolled across the dirt. Izuku coughed as he pushed himself onto his elbows. Hey, he coughed. That's so mean. Suddenly he was being pulled backward into someone's arms. Let go. Let go, Izuku screamed. Hey, it's okay. It's me. It's Todoroki. The voice was soothing, if a little panicked, but Izuku could hardly care. No, stop, Izuku struggled. Arms were around his waist, his back against the boy's stomach. Izuku, give him back. Dobby yelled, and Izuku squirmed, making the boy holding him unable to use his hands for anything but restraining him, which Izuku assumed would make it harder for the boy to use whatever his quirk was. It involved ice. Izuku. Izuku froze, but so did everyone else. Give back my youngest party member, or I'll decay every one of these heroes that are right in front of you. Tarma's voice was soft. Deadly, Izuku looked up and saw Compress had released an unconscious Pixie Bob, Mandalay, and Ragdoll, and laid them at Tomura's feet. Where had he gotten Ragdoll? Mura! Izuku cried, reaching for Tomura uselessly as the hands holding him tightened. Please, please let me go back to them. He saved me. How did he save you? The boy's voice asked a little breathlessly. That's what Tomura does. He saves people. Izuku tried to explain while still struggling. What Tomura's doing is important. He wants to fix things. People are broken, and he helps them not be broken anymore. He saved me when I was all alone and scared, and he saved twice when he was falling apart. He saved Toga and Dobby from their past and gave them a new home. He saves people, and he brings them together, and he's going to do it whether you like it or not, Izuku ranted, panting as he struggled. I want to go back. Please let me go back. I can't. The boy never finished his sentence, though, and Izuku realized why when he saw the portal open behind him. Magne's fist had been coming through it. His capturer was collapsed, releasing Izuku, who immediately stood and ran for Tomura. Mura! Izuku gasped out, and the man scooped him up and into his arms. He vaguely noticed Compress marbling the heroes once again. It's fine, Izuku, it's fine. Those heroes won't take you away. Tomura spat out the words, seething anger and 
every filling void. I should kill all of you for touching Izuku. Deku! The brown-haired girl had stepped forward, only to be stopped by a weak and small trail of ice. Wait. The red and white-haired boy was leaning up on his elbows, one eye shot and barely conscious. Shigaraki's quirk could kill him in a second. You heroes don't know anything, Tomura said, almost wistful as he clutched onto Izuku. Izuku put a hand over the one that was covering Tomura's face, mimicking its position. He looked into Tomura's one visible eye, surprised in the deep crimson. "'Let's go back, Mura," Izuku said a little pleadingly. "'Let's go home.' Nobody seemed to move, hero students staring, and Tomura just wordlessly stepped backward into the portal. Izuku sighed in relief. Safe. When he was put down on familiar hardwood floors, he was surprised to see not one, not two, but three people. Two in chains near the wall— one on the floor being scooped up and pressed into a chair by Spinner and Magne. Murrah, did you ever learn to count? Izuku said, eyes not leaving the three captives. This is more than one. Davi snickered, and Izuku turned to him with his arms raised. He scooped Izuku up and placed him on his lap as he sat on a bar stool. The girl is Mustard's fault, Davi answered. He missed her while he was knocking out the surrounding kids. She tried to resist when he grabbed Bakugo. Izuku blinked. The other one. Bakugo? Izuku interrupted. He saw orange in his vision, flashes of white and loud pops. He heard shoves and taunts and scrapes and burns. Izuku shrank into Dobby suddenly. Kachan, he murmured as Dobby's arms wrapped around him. I'm sure you know the other one, Dobby continued stroking Izuku's hair. He stared at the third captive, red and white hair, clear as day. We grabbed him at the last moment for trying to take you away. Izuku nodded slowly. You called him, Izuku frowned. Todoroki Shoto. The boy inhaled sharply, but Izuku had only focused on Dobby. That's right. Got second in the sports festival. His quirk is half cold, half hot. He can produce ice from one side and fire from the other. Izuku gasped in delight, and he turned to the boy with sparkles in his eyes. That's so cool! Izuku leaned forward, only to be held in place by Dobby's arms. Can you switch which side you use for it? Can you make blue fire? Can you make it black? Is it, like, ice immune to your fire when it's used in combat? Or can it get in the way by melting at inconvenient times? Can you freeze an entire city solid with endless ice as long as you want your fireside to keep your temperatures regulated? Does drinking water make you use ice more effectively? Can you produce fire even if there's no oxygen? Izuku would gasp for breath. He was grinning in excitement. Breathe, Izuku, Tomura chided, taking a seat in the middle of the room. When did they put a stool there? I'm not sure the hero brat will let you test out all your theories. Izuku frowned, and he got down from Dobby's lap to wander toward the prisoners. None of them were gagged, but none of them were talking either. I'm Izuku, Izuku waved, smiling brightly at Todoroki Shoto. Do you want to be friends? I'll forgive you for trying to kidnap me if you'll be my friend. The boy hesitated, but he nodded. Yes, we can be friends, he said softly. I'm Shoto. How old are you? I'm fifteen, though. I'm younger than my classmates by a few months. Shoto smiled softly. I'm seven, probably, Izuku grinned. I can't remember much, but Mura's nice to me anyways. Izuku had glanced over his shoulder to give Tomura a beaming smile. I don't know if I'm younger than my classmates, though I don't even know if I have classmates. Izuku moved a few feet over to be in front of a girl with orange ponytail on the side of her head. Izuku mimicked the crooked ponytail, tilting his head to the side. Hello, I'm Izuku. Will you be my friend? I'm Kendo, the girl said, voice wobbly. Izuku beamed. Hi, Kendo, Izuku waved, and then retreated a few steps to look at the other two happily. Are they going to be staying? Izuku tilted his head at Tomura. He hummed thoughtfully. The Todoroki can stay if he likes. The angry one can't stay. We'll be dealing with him properly. Kendo was an accidental steal. She can probably go. Whoa, whoa. Who says Todoroki can stay? Dobby exclaimed, eyes burning. Dobby, what if he's good for us? Izuku asked. We can explain why we're doing what matters. He might like it here. Dobby looked torn, teeth gritted, but he leaned backwards onto the bar. Fine. Whatever. Izuku clapped happily. Yes. Then he grinned at Shoto and Kendo. 
You can leave soon, Kento. I'm not sure when, but it might be a while because the heroes aren't allowed to find us, okay? She looked torn between shuddering in fear and sighing in relief. Shoto, will you consider staying? As you could turn to him, the boy only blinked his face blank still. What would I be staying for? Shoto asked, his voice bland, as you could glance backward at Tomura, who hummed in approval. We want to fix society. The way things are, people get hurt. I get hurt. A lot. Izuku started, turning back to Shoto. I don't have a quirk, and people don't like that. Twice had an accident, and people don't like believe in him anymore. And they say he's crazy, and not worth saving. Toga's quirk is different than other people's, and she wasn't accepted. Everyone here, they're fighting for a reason, because nobody saved them, and Tomura did. Izuku huffed and clenched his fist, eyes determined, and he was burning into mismatching ones. Everyone deserves to be saved, even villains, my friends. They deserve to be accepted, and that can't happen right now. They want to fix it. People are going to get hurt, they know that, but heroes hurt the villains all the time to make sure that they save people. Tomura is going to be saving people like that, by hurting the heroes. But why will hurting the heroes help anything? Won't it make it so that people hate you? Shoto had asked, and Izuku nodded. People already hate them, Izuku pointed out. But they think that saving people is worth it. I don't know if I'd hurt someone, but I know Tomura would. Dobby would. So would Twice and Toga and Spitter and Mustard, Izuku admitted softly. What they want, they want to stop the government and the Hero Commission. They'd be starting over, making better rules and a better system where people can be accepted. In history, villains had all kinds of super supporters far and wide. The heroes only had the most powerful and the most perfect. Heroes... Heroes are flawed, too. Shoto's eyes darkened and Izuku's widened. He reached forward and touched Shoto's cheek lightly. You've been hurt by a hero, haven't you? Shoto looked away, pulling his face away from Izuku's fingers. Izuku stepped back with a sad smile. I hope that answered your question. Midoriya, Izuku turned to see Kendo watching closely. How did they save you? Izuku just tilted his head. I was all alone, Izuku murmured. So alone and nobody would help me. I was scared because I couldn't remember anything but my name. People saw me crying and I was alone and they didn't care, but Tomura found me and Tomura cared. He helped me without hesitating, because he does that. He saves people who the heroes won't save. Izuku turned away from her and headed for Tomura. The man had opened his arms, and Izuku climbed into his lap, getting comfortable and smiling softly. Izuku, you should get some sleep, Tomura said softly, and Izuku nodded. Okay, Mura. Izuku held still as Tomura had lifted him and walked him down to his bedroom, carrying him carefully with two lifted fingers. Izuku, Tomura called his attention as he sat Izuku on the bed. Izuku stayed seated, watching as Tomura had crouched on the floor in front of him. How did you like the mission? I liked it, but I'm confused, Izuku admitted. Some of them, some of them knew me. You told me they would, and that's why I'd be a distraction. I thought you meant that they'd know me because I was missing, not because they might actually know who I was. They acted like I was a friend or a classmate, Izuku paused. I don't recognize the boy, but the name means something to me. Bakugo is Kachan, the one with the explosions in his hands, but I don't understand why he's so much older. Do you have any guesses? Tomura was searching his face, and Izuku nodded. I think I'm younger than I used to be. He looked down at his tiny hands, frowning. I think someone used to quirk on me in the mall when I woke up, and they seemed to know me which means I'd have to have been a UA student, like them. Spinner calls me a true hero, which means I probably am a hero student, one that he found worthy before I got younger. But the students seem to hate you, which probably means that you've attacked them before, attacked me before. We have, Tomura confirmed. We attacked the USJ, an off-site UA rescue training facility. Izuku blinked. That must have been super hard. Wow, that's so cool. Izuka then shook his head. You obviously knew me, and when you saw me and heard my name, you could have just abandoned me, and you didn't. Izuka looked up from his hands and into red eyes. If you knew who I was, why? Because I couldn't just leave you sitting there all alone and crying, Tomura said seriously. At first, I wondered whether it might be a good opportunity to ransom you or something, but by the time I got back to the bar, Dobby suggested that you were a hostage— 
I didn't see it that way. You saved me, even though I was who you thought to be an enemy, Izuku whispered. You never really did choose to be my enemy, Tomura's lip curled upward in amusement. I kind of chose for you, Izuku giggled quietly. Thank you for telling me, Tomura, Izuku said with a smile, and Shigaraki just nodded. Get some sleep. All right, everyone, this concludes part two of Little Izuku and the League of Villains. Part three will be the final part to this, and that will be next. I hope you guys are still enjoying, and as always, thank you all so much for listening.